Hello friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch. And you know, this time of calamity with the virus worldwide, I want to reach out to you with some hope. And that feeling comes to me through two people who have influenced my life in a big way, and they are John Coltrane and Martin Luther King Jr. And I have a couple quotes for you from them. The first one from John Coltrane, he said this, My music is the spiritual expression of what I am, my faith, my knowledge, my being. Now, if you listen to John Coltrane's music, you know what he's saying. You know that that music is, has, is very beautiful, it's very spiritual, and it's very uplifting. You know, it's also passionate, and it's, sometimes it's dark and angry, but it's all of life. And then from Martin Luther King, this is very inspiring to me. He said this, we must accept finite disappointment, but we must never lose infinite hope. Now, that's a beautiful statement because we do all have to, you know, be disappointed at times in life. But no matter what happens, we must always have infinite hope. And I hope that for you. I know people are going through difficult times in which uh, people are suffering and dying, and people are out of work, and they're, and they're uh, depressed. You have despair, you don't know what's going to happen. I hope that these two great people, John Coltrane and Martin Luther King, and through me conveying these thoughts to you will be helpful. And also what I'm going to give to you this evening, a song by John Coltrane that is very appropriate called Equinox, it's a minor blues. So here we go now with John Coltrane's Equinox. Now the thing about modal chords as opposed to chords we call block chords that are built on thirds like say a minor C minor 7th would be this or C minor 6th. Now I'm going to play that chord or actually this chord or what I actually played was this chord. So now what are those chords? They're fourth voicings. Now you can have a perfect fourth voicing like these are, or you can have one that has an augmented fourth on the lower interval and then a perfect fourth on the upper interval. And that's the one I used there. So that's the chord that I'm playing for the C minor pentatonic. Now where are we getting that from? Where are we getting these chords from? We're getting them from the major pentatonic 
scale, which is one, two, three, five, six. Now, that's the first mode. Uh, if you know about modes, then modes are just different degrees of the scale that we start on. So this would be the first mode. The second mode would start on F. That'd be the second mode. The third would start on G. That's the third mode. Fourth mode would be starting on B flat. And then the last mode would start on C. Let's go down here. Now that's the mode I'm using. That's the scale I'm using with this chord. The same as the black notes, look, you see that you have the modal scale within the black notes. They're G flat, one, two, three, five, six. So now, that's the scale. Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking the voicings now for that, and I can use any of the fourth voicings that are in the scale of, let's say, C minor. Now, C minor is relative to E flat major, right? So you'd have three flats. E flat, A flat, B flat. So now we have this scale. That's the scale. It's underneath all this. Now, you see that in modal chords are sort of a simplification of block chords, and as a result, they have more ambiguity or more possibilities. In other words, you can use them in a, a more variety of ways than you can with block chords, which are much more specific. These are much more uh, am ambiguous and abstract in a way, but it creates a certain kind of sound. It's a modern sound that you want to have. In other words, you don't want to be playing E flat major seven like that. You want to be playing it like, like that maybe. Now, you might like that, but that's the fourth voicing for E flat major, 6-9. So actually now I can play all these chords in fourth voicings that fit the scale of C minor relative to E flat major. I can play them like this. This voicing, which is the root, the fourth, and the flat seven, and I can go right up the scale like that. Now when I get to here, I may not do that, but I might do this. Now you say, why don't you play the A flat? Because of the D flat in there is not going to be the correct note. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change it to that. Even though it has that A in there, I'm okay with that. That's a on the C minor, it's the sixth. And that's a horse silver chord, right? interesting sounding chord. Then I can go up to here. I have the fourth and the flat. That's a perfect one. The flat seven and, and the uh, minor third. Then I can go up to here in the scale. Then I go to here, which is augmented now. I add the nine and the flat six now. And then up to here, which is the flat seven, the three. You hope you're following this, but you see now here, here it is. All these chords work that scale. See, now that combination of chords that you can use makes this very exclusive, a very exclusive sound. In other words, it's, sim it's, it's much simpler and more am ambiguous to use than to be using block chords. So now, one of the fascinating things about this is in C minor, if I go down to this voicing, which is the with the root and the, the fourth and the flat seven, you can still put the minor third in there, it doesn't matter, it's going to work. But if I transpose that up now, and I, up to the fourth, I have this, so now I went from here. So I use that voicing on the, on the F minor, see? You see, so each one, you can use this voicing on a G minor. See, there you go. So you have all these multiple possibilities for these voicings. Like, for instance, this could be a C minor, or it also could be an E flat major. So you could be also in a form of an A flat third, 
six, an A flat six nine. It could be a G minor, you know, with a suspended fourth, right? Could be a C seven with a suspended fourth. You see, so there's so many possibilities. It, it allows you to have more freedom. And plus you can begin to play these kind of intervals. And then you can shift them to create a more modern sound. You're getting the McCoy Tyner Chick Corea type of sound. A lot more freedom. You have the modal use of the chords and the scales. Now I try to mix it up. I try to use some of the pentatonic scales. So the pentatonic scale for the C minor would be this one. That's the central scale that I want to use. But then within that I can do things that are, are more melodic, like... You know, more bebop-ish. I combine, I try to combine melodic things with pentatonic things, with ideas that build on other ideas, like... You can mix it up with a variety of different melodic ideas when you're playing in this this style, this modal style. Okay, now interpreting this song Equinox, I used a few liberties. In other words, I went from C minor, and then what I did is an approach chord to the four chord by going, making the C minor now a C7, altered, maybe a sharp nine in it and a sharp five the F minor, or F minor, and then I put a G7 in there to take me back to C minor. So I'm adding chords that are not specifically on the chart. Then I did a six chord, and then instead of going to the, the flat six, I would go to the flat three. In other words, to a, a chromatic two five, like E flat minor, A flat seven, D minor, or D minor flat five if you want, and a G7 altered. So I'm adding chords that aren't in the actual chart of the song just for variety's sake. And so I have more things, interesting things to do melodically. So that's that's important thing. So let's let's go through that. We're gonna go C minor, C aug seven augmented to the F minor and the G7 to approach the C minor again, and then the VI chord, altered like that, and then the three minor to the two fives, two five to the C minor, and then back to the five chord. This gives you more chords to play on, and that's fun too. I mean, you can keep it simple, or you can make it more interesting by adding extra chords if you know which ones to use. Now, if you're a beginner student to modal jazz, you haven't played modal yet, but you like the sound of it and you want to learn to play it, then a great way to start is maybe just to do something like this. Find the basic chord you want to play. Find that basic scale, that pentatonic scale, that fifth mode minor pentatonic scale, and just work with that. I even added an extra note there, but... four chord you can play pretty much that same scale now here you're gonna have to change it you could the simplest one would be this go to A flat now you can actually you could do that but I think this is better that might no might, might be in there that, that dominant seventh That's pretty simple. I mean, and you can play through the whole pattern of the minor blues, just mostly on that pentatonic scale. So I'm playing just that pentatonic scale. Now it's a simplification of a of a blues scale. If you had a blues scale, you just add a couple notes, right? 
<laughs> That's the only other note you're going to add. So if you, you can pretty much think of this as a blues scale. Concluding, I want to tell you that if you have an opportunity to record yourself playing, that's a really good thing to do. See, I'm doing that when I do these uh, takes on a song. And then I try to pick out the one that, um, that I like the best, or the one that, 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 that um, bothers me the, the least of all of them. It's usually a negative thing. But it's a way to grow and improve. So in other words, you record yourself, you listen to your playing, and you say, well, I didn't like what I did there, or I should have done this there, or I should have played that voicing, or I, should have, I could have played that line cleaner, and so on. And so then you try again, you do another take, and eventually over time, the more takes you do, and I generally do probably about seven or eight takes. It depends on the song, of course. Some go quickly and well. Some are too long to do that many takes, or some are just, uh, if they're short enough, like something like this, I can do, I did probably eight takes, and actually I took the last one, and for different reasons, you don't know why you pick certain ones, I mean, I try to play cleanly, I try to play good ideas, I try to uh, not make mistakes, you know, um, it's very easy to criticize yourself constantly so um, I'm hoping I will encourage you to do that to record yourself and learn from it and do it every day every time you practice record yourself listen to it and then see what you want to improve how you want to improve in certain areas and how to do that become analytical that's that's what I'm trying to say because it it's an intellectual process and you know music isn't all analytical but a lot of it is so let's utilize that <laughs> okay Okay, so I hope this has been useful to you as an introduction to modal playing. And um, please write to me. I have more on this. If you go to my playlist, I have other videos I've done on modal playing in, in more depth than this one. But I hope this was a good introduction to it using a simple tune, Equinox, a minor blues. And I hope you will uh, practice this and enjoy playing it. And excuse the fact that the piano is out of tune. So now we'll wrap up. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, I really appreciate that you tuned in to me this evening. I hope I've inspired you in some way or given you more feeling of hope for whatever your situation is. And, you know, Hermie Dressel, he's still up there looking down at us and he's saying, swing loose, which means hang in there, you know, things will get better and the future is ours. Just hang together as a community, as a state, as a country, as a world. We want to get through this and come out better from it. Mm -hmm.